Today's video is going to be something that is totally different than what I usually do. For many years now, I have had different desks that I've worked on and I haven't exactly done a video about them because it didn't really fit the YouTuber aesthetic. Now, it's not like this one does, but I believe this, my current setup, can help someone who is looking for affordable items or accessories for their desk, either to help it look better or help with their productivity. So this is the ultimate minimalist desk setup and every single thing I talk about today, I'll leave a link in the description just in case anyone is interested. All right, let's get started. The first thing here is the desk itself. And because of the nature of my job, I sit down a lot of the time and for long hours editing different videos. And over time, it has affected my knees. So with all that, I knew I needed a change. I reached out to Flexi Spots and they were kind enough to send me the E7 standing desk. This has been a game changer for me because this table goes as high as 48 inches and has a weight capacity of 355 pounds. I definitely tried it out. It took my entire body weight without it even, you know, shaking or moving. It has very steady motors when moving up and down and also has a very satisfying sound. Now, apart from the table, Flexispots also sent me the C7 ergonomic chair and it has also been a game changer from just using a generic chair from Amazon that I've used for the last two years to this beautiful piece of equipment. I asked for the C7 ergonomic chair due to the fact that I have lower back issues as this chair has great lumbar support and detects subtle changes in your posture. It is height adjustable and the quality of the foam or mesh used is pretty good and comfortable. Now, if I do find myself lost inside Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro, I can be rest assured that my back won't be screaming for me to stand up. So shout out to Flexispots for sending this over. I really, really appreciate it. The tabletop is from Ikea and I have been eyeing this since last year. It was completely sold out, so it was a bit of a waiting game. When it was finally available, I bought it as quickly as anything I've ever gotten before. And I got the gray color because this is the aesthetic I'm going for, gray, white, and black, and maybe a bit of brown somewhere in between. And I think this does a good job of balancing out those colors. The dimensions are 78 by 23, and I decided for a longer tabletop than most to fit in everything I would want at a given time without compromising space definitely one of the better tabletops that I have come across. On the desk itself, everything I have here is used for creating content and running this channel as a business. And the most important challenge that I've had over the last year was editing. Not because it took longer hours, but because I was using the 2021 iMac and it was great for its time. But after three years, it slowed down a lot. So I decided to change this and get the M1 Max Mac Studio and good lord, this thing can take anything you throw at it. It has 32 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. Basically, I can run through Final Cut with ease and without thinking too much. I can scrub through footage and it won't even lag behind. And the best part is I can export 4K footage in S-Log3 in under two minutes. It is honestly a beast and I highly, highly recommend this to anyone that has a slow computer or maybe you want the best of the best, the Mac Studio might just be for you. It is on the pricey side, don't get me wrong, but I see this as a worthwhile investment. The monitor connected to my Mac Studio is the Dell U2723 QE Ultra Sharp Monitor. And because I have used an iMac for a while, I am really used to five to 6K displays. So when shopping for a new monitor, I had to get something that was close to it and within my budget. And after watching a billion YouTube videos on which monitor is the best, I settled for this one during Black Friday. Now, one of the big reasons I chose this monitor, apart from it being 4K or UHD or all that stuff, are the different ports at the back. This thing is Port City. It has everything you need from an HDMI port to two USB-C ports that charges at 15 watts, two display ports, and so on. It is also height adjustable, so that is a plus. It is no Apple Studio display, but I absolutely love this monitor. I was also fortunate enough to get a good deal out of this, considering this is a $1,000 monitor, but I'm pretty sure you can get it off Facebook Marketplace or even Best Buy refurbished if you don't really want to spend much. Above the Dell Ultra Shop is the Insta360 link that replaces the webcam from the 2021 iMac. This is an AI-powered 4K webcam that meets the needs of someone like me. It has great features like AI tracking, hand gestures, and many more, 
But the truth of the matter is, I just needed something that had great camera quality and the Insta360 link does better than most of the webcams that I've used. The next part of my setup was very imperative to my workflow, that is my desk mat and my keyboard. I believe they go hand in hand as it really just helps your productivity. So with that in mind, it took me a long time to get to this destination. I tried a bunch of desk mats from Amazon to Etsy. The cheap ones, the expensive ones, but nothing really came close to the Grove made felt mat. The texture, how it feels under my wrist, and the overall feel it gives me is second to none. The size right here is a medium, but if I could go back in time, I'll get the medium plus as it's just bigger and is overall suited for me in a different way. On top of my desk mats is the Newfi Air 96 mechanical keyboard, and this is my first mechanical keyboard, and so far I have loved everything about it. I love the entire aesthetic of the keyboard and I decided to go for the grey colour as this also matches the theme of my desk. They have extra colours on certain keys like your escape key or the enter key and whatnot and that is a nice touch. It is backlit with RGB lights if that is your thing but I turn it off completely as it is very distracting. It also came with extra keycaps if I ever want to switch things up and I think the overall general build is pretty good and I definitely recommend this if you are looking for a mechanical keyboard without breaking the back. This one right here I'm excited about because it's been a long time since I had good studio speakers. I mean really really good ones. In the past I usually have had a Google Home or an Alexa Echo but this right here is the real deal. This is the Edifier R1700BT and yes it is a mouthful to say. These speakers are primetime stuff. I have them connected to the headphone jack of the Mac Studio and these are great for music and of course editing. It's not every time I would like to use headphones to edit because it does give me headaches over time so this is a great alternative. Now the bass is good, better than I expected, the voices when the music is playing are very clear and this is just overall a great pair of speakers. Of course it goes without saying that I chose the grey and white colour because aesthetics and why not but it does come in brown so if you also want that that is a different color choice now if you're looking for great speakers that won't break the bank again this should be on your radar but when i'm not using these speakers i use my headphones these are the sony wh1000 xm5s and i'm not really sure why audio devices or headphones have such long names Anyway, I have been using this for almost two years and there isn't much that I can say that people haven't already said. Now, apart from using it for work, they're also my travel headphones and they're great on flights and just getting away from the noise around you. I use an under the table holder for my headphones, nothing too fancy. I got it off Amazon very cheap for like 20 bucks. It is really generic but functional at the same time. A few other things that bring my desk to life are two lamps on each side of my desk. I might change one of them, preferably the one on my right, but they help me when I do not want to turn on the main lights in my room and just gives me mood lighting if that makes sense, especially if I'm just going to work throughout the entire night. Moving away from the desk itself and what is above it, we have two posters and a pegboard. Now the two posters are from the movie Creed and I'm a huge Rocky and Creed fan. I've probably seen those movies like a thousand times at this point. The middle has my pegboard and I primarily just keep the extra stuff there. So the first camera I ever used when I started four years ago, the Canon 80D, the second camera, the Sony ZV-E10 and other things. The big tray in the middle is for the extra phones that I'm not using at the moment or for the ones that I am yet to review. We have wires, we have pens, we have a lot of stuff and it's just a regular pegboard to be honest. I also have an L-shaped light from Govi which adds a bit of finesse to my setup. Now I really like how it looks, maybe I should have gone for a longer one. Honestly with these things or with these desk setups you can't really finish, you're always going to be adding stuff and removing stuff every now and then. But that is everything on my desk. What do you guys think? Do you want me to add stuff, remove stuff, and do you want anything? Remember, links for everything that I've mentioned in this video will be down in the description below. Purchasing anything gives me a small commission. I use this to keep the channel going. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe as this helps me go a long way. My name is KJ and I'll catch you guys in the next one.